Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this third lesson in our mathematics lessons, our series of lessons brought to you by turnable.org. Um, again, I would like to urge you to join, to sign up on the turnable.org website and then join the Grade 12 Maths class. The reason for this is, first of all, um, you will have access to a huge quantity of material and resources on the turnable.org website. There are exam papers, there's test papers, there are memos for all those, there are multiple choice questions, and trust me, you can learn a lot from multiple choice, um, and all the answers, and then there are videos which will teach you about the different sections as well. And then if you join the grade 12 maths class, then you can also message me, which I would really like to happen, because then you could give me some indication of what you would like to learn or on sections that you're struggling with, and we can basically have a dialogue. Um, even if I don't necessarily see the messaging during the lesson, if I'm too involved in answering the questions that are on the screen, um, I will be able to see all the messages afterwards, and then I will be able to address them. Also, if you miss the part, a part of the session, or maybe you've got sport or something, and you don't get to actually see the lesson, same link that you would have clicked on to get to this lesson, and you will see that and you will see a recording of this lesson. Okay, it won't be live anymore, obviously, but you, it's still there and available to you. Also, if you miss anything, like if I talk too fast or if you didn't quite get the concept, then you can see that. Finally, last thing I want to say before we get started is that at the moment we're going through the Eastern Cape Common Paper, the June Common Paper. And ideally, what I would like you guys to do is to download the paper and then try the questions for yourselves, either before or after I've done it. If you do it before, great. If you do it after, that's fine too. Then you can come back and have a look at how I've done it. Once we finish going through the whole paper, I will upload, or well, we will upload the memos. But remember what I said, I don't want you using the memos. I don't want it's not a very good learning technique to have the memos sitting next to you while you are doing the question paper because then you cannot help but glance at the memos. Trust me, I'm human, I've been there, I know. We look at the memo all the time, okay? And then what happens is that we think we know exactly how to do the questions and we get to the exams and we are flabbergasted. We are totally clueless as to why we don't know how to do the problem and the reason is is that we've always had the memo next to us okay right so let's get started and we are moving on to question six which is a finance question and it says jerry receives 12,000 rand with to invest for a period of five years it's very nice for jerry he is offered an interest rate of 8.5 percent compounded quarterly, compounded quarterly, that's important, and this is determine the effective interest rate. Now, if you look at your formula sheet, and guys, you really should have your maths formula sheet in your maths file or your maths folder or your book, whatever you're using, please have it and make it sure that it's all of, always available to you because it's a very important tool to use during your tests and your exams, and you're always provided with a formula sheet. So please use it effectively. But now, having said that, the effective interest rate formula is not on the formula sheet. You need to learn it. It's one of the few that you actually have to learn. So let me write it out. It becomes one plus I effective is equal to bracket one plus I nominal over N all to the power of N. Where I EFF is obviously the effective interest rate, right? I nom is the nominal interest rate, the nominal. A nominal is just another word for the named interest rate. In other words, that's the interest rate they said you're getting. But it's not the effective interest rate, it's not the interest rate. Effective interest rate is the interest rate you actually get, okay? Whereas the nominal is what they say you're getting, 
Okay, right. And then N is the number of payments. Okay, so we're going to apply this information to this equation to work out our effective interest rate. So we've got 1 plus I effective is equal to 1 plus now this always has to be a decimal so it becomes 8 comma 5 and but then you have to make sure that it is divided by this is not just it's 8.5 over 100 because this is 8.5 percent so you need to change it into decimal so you can either immediately change it to 0 comma 0 to 85 or you can just divide it by 100 but then You've got this n and the n is 4 and why is it 4 because this is compounded quarterly it's compounded quarterly and quarterly means that you're paying it four times a year so we're going to times that by four and then it's all to the power of n which is again four right so let's write that out nice and neatly it's one plus i effective is equal to one plus 8,5 over 400 all to the power of 4. So do you agree with I effective? All I need to do is take this one across. So I effective is equal to 1 plus 8,5 over 400 all to the power of 4 minus 1. And now I need my calculator. So let's get it out. And let's clear it. Okay, so let's leave it on the side actually. So what do we want? We want bracket one plus 8.5, oh the eight did not come out, 8.5 all over 400 bracket to the power of 4, move along along, minus 1 equals, and that becomes 0, 0, 0, 0.877, 0, 0, 0.877 equals 0, 0, 0.877. So therefore remember that this is a decimal, we need to change it back to a percentage, and you do that by multiplying by 100. So that becomes 8,77%. So the effective interest rate, I effective, is 8,77. Now, there's one thing I want to do before I carry on with the next question is I actually want to bring the calculator back up. And I want to show you how to do this if you don't have such a fancy calculator. And again, as I said yesterday, the reason I want to do that is because of the fact that majority of people don't have calculators with these little fraction signs in them. And a lot of people know how to fill it in, but then lose marks in the last step because they don't know how to use their calculator. So let's do this. Okay, so let me show you how would, you would do this if you didn't have such a fancy calculator. So you would start with a fraction. So you go 8 comma 5 divided by 400 equals, right? Then you add your 1 plus 1 equals. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that and take it to the power of 4. So we go to the power of 4. And then finally you subtract your 1. Okay, so you're working from the inner inside out. Okay, you work with your your fraction and then you work with your one, then the out is your exponents and then your minus one. And you will see you get exactly the same answer because obviously you should. Okay, so that there is the effective interest rate. Right, let's do the next part of the question which says, what is the amount that Jerry will receive at the end of the five years? What is the amount that Jerry will receive at the end of the five years? Now this formula is definitely on the formula sheet and that is a compound interest formula. But before we carry on, I'm just going to erase all the writing. Okay, so the compound interest formula is A is equal to P bracket 
1 plus i to the power of n. Okay, where a is the amount of money you're going to get out, p is your principal, which is not your principal or head of your school. This is the principal, is the amount of money you're investing. Okay, I is your interest, but it's always in a decimal. And N is the number of payments. Okay, so let's do this. Do we have, and I always like to list my variables and make sure I know what's going on. So P is your principal, the amount of money you're investing, which is 12,000. I is your interest rate, okay, which is 8,5% percent, which remember I have to change into a decimal, and N is the number of payments, number of payments, which in this case is four per year, but we're doing it for five years, so therefore this is 20. Right, okay, happy with that. So now you need to take that into account and do this. So it becomes a is equal to P, sorry, I can just put it straight in, 12,000, 1 plus 8.5, and again, it's going to be over 400, okay, because it's compounded quarterly, but then how many payments are there? There are 20 payments. So again, we need our calculator, so we're going to get it out. Okay, and we're going to clear it. And we're going to go 12,000 times bracket 1 plus 8.5 all over 400 bracket, oh, no, sorry, delete, go sideways, bracket, all to the power of 20 equals and it comes to 18,273 rand and 53 cents well it's actually 54 cents why because we have to round up because this number here is a seven so the answer is 18,273 rand and 54 cents and I'm just going to show you this once more using this calculator work that if you didn't have a fancy calculator with a fraction, okay, the way you would do it is you would work from the in, inside of the bracket out. So we're going to do the fraction first. So you go 8, 5 divided by 400. Then you add 1. Then you do it to the power of 20. And then you multiply it by 12,000 and you'll get the same answer. Okay, right, let's do the next question, shall we? It says, a company bought office furniture that cost 120,000 rand, so that's what it cost. After how many years will the furniture depreciate to a value of 41,611 and 57 cents according to the reducing balance method if the rate of depreciation was 12.4% per annum. So this is actually a compound interest question, except instead of it appreciating, it's depreciating, okay? So the equation we're going to be using is A is equal to P, 1 minus I to the N, okay? So in this case, the P, the principal, is the amount of money we spent or invested in the furniture at the beginning. So our P is 120,000. A is the amount of money we're going to get out if we had to sell that furniture now, which would be 41,611.57. cents. I is the interest 
which is 12,4%, but remember it has to be a decimal, so in this case it would be 0,124. How am I getting that? I'm taking my 12,4 and dividing it by 100 because it's out of a, out of 100, okay? So 12.4% is the same as, exactly the same as if you say 12.4 out of 100. So I'm dividing it and I'm getting 0,124. And we are trying to work out what N is, okay? And it says that this interest rate is per annum, which means we don't have to worry about dividing this number by anything. It's actually just divided by one. So let's put this all into the formula or the equation and see if we can get an answer out. So we've got 41,611,57 equals the principal, which is 120,000, 1 minus 0, 124, all to the power of n, okay? Right, so then we want to solve for n. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 120,000. Why? We are trying to isolate this year. So we need to first get rid of the number in front of the brackets. So we're going to divide both sides by the 120,000. Okay. So you agree that that cancels with that. Okay. Then, if we use our calculators, which I'm not going to worry to do, 1 minus 0,124 is 0,876. So 0,876 is to the power of n is equal to 41,611,57 over 120,000. Okay, so now I'm going to start by using my calculator. So I'm going to work out what this is. So I'm going to clear this and I'm going to go 41,611,57 divided by 120, 1, 2, 3. And I get 0, 0,3467630833. Okay, I'm going to write out that whole number simply because we don't want to lose any of that. And when we actually realize how we're going to do this, you'll realize you can actually use this in the calculator without having to write it all down. But I'm going to write it out. So it becomes 0, 0,3467630833. 0, is equal to 0, 0,876n. Okay. Now, we want to find what 0 0.876, what the n is. So what we can do is we can log both sides. Okay. So we can log this side and that log that side. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to skip this and go back. Let's say we've got this here. Do you agree to get the n? We can log both sides because the inverse of an exponent is a log. And this is a log. Okay. So I'm going to log, log of 41611,57 over 120,000 is equal to log 0, 0,876 to the power of n. Now, if you know your log rules, now here's the tricky thing, grade 12s, and you need to understand this. Logs and log rules are not officially in the, in the curriculum anymore. They don't ask you logs. They don't go, what is log A plus log B? Okay, they don't do that. But you need to know the log rules in order to do your finance. So the log rule that is applying here is that if you've got log a to the power of n, that can be rewritten as n log a, okay? And that's what we're going to apply here. We're going to take this n and bring it to the front. So then we've got log of this horrible bracket, I'm not writing it out again, is equal to n log 0,876. And then what I can do is I can divide both sides by log of 0,876. And then I will get 
n and that's why I knew that I wouldn't have to worry about remembering that number. So let's put this in our calculators and there we go, I ended up writing it out anyway. Okay, so let's put this in our calculator, shall we? So let's clear. Okay, we've got log, log. Okay, and some of you might have lin, which is a natural logarithm, and some of you might have this fancy log base base. If it's just a log, it doesn't matter in this case because they're both of the same value, as in they have the same bases, they would cancel. Okay, but if it is just a log without any number, then it has a base 10. But anyway, never mind that. Let's carry on with this. So this becomes 41611,57 all over 120, 1, 2, 3, move over, close your bracket, equals. Then we're going to divide it by a log of 0,876 close bracket and that gives you seven comma na 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 and when you round it up it's obviously eight years so n is approximately eight years okay right let's move on to um please explain the logs okay okay i've got my first message from well from somebody i don't know hello okay let me explain logs let me just Go back a little bit and let me clear out. I'm going to erase all the ink, okay? So basically, logs are the inverses of exponents, and your rule is the way that I remember it, it's a silly way to remember it, but it works, is if you've got 2 to the 3 equals 8, then the rule is log 8 base 2 is equal to 3. Okay, that's the rule. The, if you want to think of it this way, you're going 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8, and log is the inverse of your exponent. Your exponent. So if you drew um, a log graph, then the, the inverse of that would be an exponential graph. Okay, so your log rules that you are applying here is you are saying that you have got the number, this really long number, 0,3467, which we don't care. So let's say you're using, and this is probably the only log rule that you, the main, the main log rule you're going to need in finance, which is saying that some number, let's call it 4, is equal to some other number, let's call it 2 to the power of n, and you're using this rule, okay, which could be rewritten as x to the y is equal to n, then log of, let's do that, log of what? Log of n base x is equal to y, okay? So in other words, I tend to draw a circle, x to the n is equal to y, x to the n is equal to y. Okay, so then what you would do is to solve for this n, you need to log both sides. So you can either just apply that rule or you can log both sides. I tend to log both sides. So I go log of 4 is equal to log 2 to the base n. Okay, so this is if you're not applying this rule. Okay, then what will happen is you need to know the next rule which says that if you have log a to the power of n then that can be written as n log a and I'm not proving that to you because that is a really long proof okay you just need to know that law which means I can then take the n to the front so I've got log 4 is equal to n log 2 Okay, and you can't just think, oh, okay, fine, well, then I, okay, then I can solve for n, right? So I go n is equal to log 4 over log 2. And here's where the problem is. A lot of people think, well, I can just cancel my logs, but you can't. That would be the same as going, if you're in trig, and you're going, well, this is sine x 
over sine y. Oh, look, I can just cancel my sines and my sines, and I've got x over y. The log 4 is actually a number. It's actually the logarithm of that number, which you put in your calculator. So then you would put this in your calculator, you'd end up with n. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do is, since you're asking, if that doesn't solve your problem for this, and if it, it doesn't help you solve for finance questions, then let me know and I will do a special little extra bit of a lesson in the next lesson that talks about logs. Okay, so let me know. Right, let's move on to the next question. Okay, Andrew plans to save 20,000 Rand for a deposit on a new car. He decides to use part of his annual basis to pay three even annual deposits into his savings account at the beginning of every year. Calculate how much money he must deposit to save up 20,000 Rand over three years. Interest on the savings account is 8% per annum compounded quarterly. Okay, now grade 12, what I'd really, really like to suggest you do is when you read these, highlight the important bits, highlight the important bits because it helps you work out what's going on. So what they're saying is that he needs to save up 20,000 Rand. That's what he needs. He needs 20,000 Rand for a deposit on a new car. He decides to take his annual bonus, whatever that may be, and pay three even annual deposits. Okay, so he's taking his year and he's breaking it up into three parts. So if you had to take your year and divide it up into three parts, do you agree that you're going to have um, four, eight, and 12? Okay. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. Do you agree that you will have one payment in the fourth month, one payment in the eighth month, and one payment in the twelfth month, right? And he's doing that in the savings account at the beginning of every year, and it says calculate how much money he must deposit to save up after three years. And then finally, the interest is 8% per annum compounded quarterly. So as soon as we see in quarterly, we need a four. Okay. So if we think about this, do you agree that we are looking at the fact that this is a compound interest and there's three sums happening here? There is one for each of these even annual deposits, okay? So do you agree his first deposit might be in the beginning of the year, okay? And then that would be compounded, okay? So if you think about it, hang on, we've got x, 1 plus 8 over 400, okay, and that would be to the power of 12, okay, that's his first of his annual deposits, three annual deposits, and I'll explain why it's to the power of 12 in a minute, but I'll give you a hint. Look, there's three years, okay? Then there's another one, the second one, and that's one plus eight over 400, but it's to the power of eight. And then there's a third one, which is one plus eight over 400, all to the power of four, okay? And those are your three payments, but it's over your three years. Now think about this. This, in, this value here is actually the number of payments he's making, right? So do you agree that he's making three even annual deposits, okay? So he's making one deposit, okay? And he's gonna make it for three years. So if you look at it, you've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? But they're also only gonna, only gonna experience interest for the period of time that they've been deposited, okay? So the first one is going to experience the full time that it has been in the savings account. It's going to be four, times three. The second one is going to be four 
times two and the last one is just four times one okay and each of these x's is the amount of money that he's depositing and all this has to add up to 20,000 rand and what we need to do is work out what this x is we're trying to find out what he's he depositing what is he depositing so what we can do and then this is actually quite easy is we can take out a common factor so we've got x and we've got 1 plus 8 over 400 to the power of 12 plus 1 plus 8 over 400 to the power of 8 plus 1 plus 8 over 400 to the power of 4 all is equal to 20,000 and then what we can do is close brackets is we can Put this all in your calculator and then solve for x. So we could say that x is equal to 20,000 all divided by bracket 1 plus 8 over 400 to the power of 12 plus 1 plus 8 over 400 to the power of 8 plus 1 plus 8 over 400 all to the power of 4. Okay, and then we just need to use our calculators. So let's do that now. Okay, so it is, sure, okay, 20,000 all divided by bracket. Okay, then we've got bracket 1 plus 8 over 400 close bracket no move over close bracket to the power of 12 move over plus, plus next bracket next bracket going blind 1 plus fraction 8 over 400 move over close bracket to the power of 8 to the power of 8 move over plus bracket 1 plus fraction 8 again over 400 move over close bracket to the power of 4 see 4 sure move over close bracket and then your equals sure and you get 5678 rand and 5 cents because that's a force you round down okay so that equals 5,678 rand and four cents. Now, if you get that number slightly out, okay, if that number becomes um, a five cents or a three cents or whatever, don't worry about that too much because that's a rounding error. But there you go. And grade 12s, I would really suggest that if you struggle to put things, big things like this in your calculators that you do this one and then you do this one and then you do this one you write the numbers down and then you do it all in one big and then you add them and then you divide okay the problem with that of course is that you can get rounding errors but they do allow for some rounding errors right let's move on to the next question yay calculus I way prefer calculus to finance but that's just me okay so it says the term of the derivative of effects which equals 2x squared minus 3x from first principles. I guarantee you that there will be a first principle question in every single paper one that you come across. There will definitely be one. It is one of the basic questions that will always be in your exam paper. And it's usually worth between five and seven marks. So it is actually really worth learning how to do these questions on first from first principles okay 
So what I want to do now is I want to write down the formula for the first principles. Now it is on your formula sheet. So this is not one that you need to memorize, but let's just write it out, okay? It's f of x is equal, f dashed of x is equal to the limit as h tends to naught of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And what I would suggest you do is before you even launch into putting the numbers into this formula, that we write down what f of x plus h is so that we can use that. So f of x plus h, what that is, it's saying that wherever we see an x, we have to substitute in x plus h. That's what it's doing. So wherever there's an x, we have, we've got f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x. Now we've got f of x plus h. So this becomes 2x plus h squared minus 3x. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this out. We're going to do it here so it's not so messy when we substitute into that. So it becomes 2. And then I'm going to do this slowly up here. This becomes x plus h squared, which becomes x plus h, x plus h. Now, I know some of you might know the shortcut for this, but just in case you don't, I'm going to take it nice and slowly and explain it to you using FOIL. So first with first is x squared. Out is x times h is xh, plus n is xh, plus h squared, which becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. So I'm going to write it here. So that is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x and then I'm going to multiply the bracket so it's 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x and what have I done wrong here? Yeah. What I've done wrong is I haven't put this as x plus h so that wherever you see an x, it has to be x plus h. So that becomes minus 3x minus 3h. Right, so that's my f of x plus h. Now we're going to substitute into this formula. So we say f dashed of x is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now grade 12s, I know that this formula is on the formula sheet and you might be thinking why do I need to rewrite it? You need to rewrite it so that the teachers know what the hell you're doing. Oh sorry, what you're doing. Okay, you can't just launch into something. You need to explain to them what you're doing. Okay, also because if you make a silly mistake and you just write the first one down and you don't show what you were doing, then they can't really give you method marks, okay? So show the teachers what you're doing, be nice to them, okay? Now, another thing, a lot of my students tend to start leaving out the limit as the h tends to zero. The only line that you can leave that out of is at the right at the end, okay? If you leave it out any time before that, you lose marks. So you're going the limit as h tends to zero of this thing here, which we've just shown is this thing. So we're going to write it out. It's 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h, okay, minus bracket the original equation, which was 2x squared minus 3x all of h, okay? Now we're going to simplify. So we've got limit as h tends to zero. And this becomes again 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h. A minus times a plus is a minus, so it becomes minus 2x squared minus times a minus is a plus 3x all of h. 
Now let's see if we can cancel any of our terms. Do we have any like terms or add them? And yes, we do. This 3x cancels with that 3x. And this 2x squared cancels with that 2x squared. And that's wonderful. So then we can say we've got the limit as h tends to 0 of 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3h all over h. Okay. And now you can see that I could actually take out a common factor. I can take out h. There's an h there, an h squared there, and an h there. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to write it over here, and I'm going to change color so you can follow me more easily. Mm, let's do a dark red. So this becomes, and guys, you don't do this. You keep writing. If you run out of paper, you move on to the next page. You do not write next to it, okay? It's just that I can't do that without losing this, and I don't want you to lose what we've done. So it becomes equals the limit as h tends to zero. Take out a common factor of h, and you're left with 4x plus 2h minus 3 all over h. So do you agree that means I can cancel the h's, right? So what have we got now? We've got the limit as h tends to 0 of 4x plus 2h minus 3. But now we apply this thing here. And what does it say? This says is saying, what does this equation actually approximate? Okay, what is this closest to if h is basically equal to 0? And that means that this term here disappears and you're left with 4x minus 3. And that is the very first time that you can lose that because you've now applied it. Right, so that is the answer. And the very cool thing about this, grade 12s, is we can then check it. Okay, you can use your rule. You can go, well, we know that f of x is equal to a x to the n, then f negative f dashed of x is equal to n a x to the n minus 1. I can use that rule. So f dashed of x means it's going to be take the 2 to the front becomes 4x minus this goes away because that becomes 0, 3. And yay, it's the same thing. So even if you really struggle with this, you can use your shortcut, your rule, and you can make sure you get the right answer. And to be honest, that's what I would do. And then if your answer isn't right, I'd be sneaky. Don't tell your teachers I said this, okay? What I would do is I would write everything down, okay? And then I would write down the correct answer right at the end, okay? Because that shows at least you know what it was meant to do. Okay, so somewhere along there you may have made a silly mistake, but you know what the final answer should be. And if nothing else, you will get at least one mark for that final answer, which you know is correct. Okay, grade 12, I'm going to love and leave you there because the next question is actually then using the rule, but it's quite a tricky question. And then we're going to move on to, I think, graphs. Okay, calculus graphs probably. Yes, I'm right. Okay, so what I would like to suggest you do is again, get your hands on this paper if you can. Um, it's in the Turn Able questions, okay? I mean, in this Turn Able website. So please go, and you have to go online. It's not actually in the, the app the app at all that hasn't been updated so you need to go online and onto the platform itself okay and then go find this paper or just re-watch this video and then stop at the beginning of each question and then do the questions again for yourselves and make sure you know what to do okay please join me tomorrow and we will carry on going through this paper have a great day